children go to school and learn well. Otherwise, later on in life, you go catch real hell. Sing with me. Without an education in your head, your whole life will be pure misery. You're better off dead. For there is simply no room in this whole wide world for an uneducated little boy or girl. Don't allow idle companions to lead you astray. To earn tomorrow, you got to learn today. Mr. Moderator, Brother Kwesi Mutima, Mr. Curtis Manchun, Chairman of the Board of Governors of UTT, other members present of the, in the board, Professor Dyla Narayan Singh, our president, principals, teachers, other presenters, students. With respect to the budget, and I always begin all my speeches with a calypso, for those of you who know me, but with respect to the budget and the creative arts, and the government, by way of two statements in the budget, made reference to this important area. First, the finance minister named a company, the Trent Tobago Creative Industries, to oversee the growth and development of cultural industries, and he named three appropriately focused subsidiaries, the Trent Tobago Film Company, the Trent Tobago Music Company Limited, and the Trent Tobago Fashion Company Limited to spearhead the growth of business development of these industries. And the second statement I found in the budget that related to us is one that can be found under tertiary education. And the statement was, and I quote, the government has been focusing on the development of our country's resources. I was looking forward to more in the budget. I expected more emphasis on the arts and culture, first because of the importance of culture to any society, and because the minister showed that out of a total expenditure of $61.4 billion, that $23.4 billion was expected from the non-oil sector, and you can check the figures. I expected more too because whilst we have placed the emphasis on entrepreneurial and monetary returns, very important, there was a need, I believe, in my humble opinion, to emphasize life, the aesthetics, in short, the all wrong development of the individual. In other words, the, the arts as essential to human development. I expected more also on the arts, for in my view, there's a lack of feeling in this country for our cultural heroes. There's a low level of cultural literacy in the country. You didn't sing with me just now, you see that. And the budget therefore needed something to facilitate that as well, as the need to brand Tran Tobago in dance and drama and films, even in musical areas. But yet I remain very happy and very proud because I know of the emphasis that the Honorable Minister of Training, Senator F F um, Ali F F Fazal, Karim, I know of the emphasis he has placed on training and he has stressed the need for more degrees and the need for skills training and trades and the trade school concept and the OJT training and metal industries. And I really want to congratulate him. I'm sorry he has left because his whole life, he has been, everywhere he goes, he speaks about training and the need for training. So I know the government means well in terms of training. I was happy to when, when the Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, Senator Douglas, when he was speaking the budget, he stressed the importance of carnival. And, this, and its contribution. And he said that Carnival contributes over $400 million to the economy. And that government expected to spend $100 million on the products. I was very happy that he understood the importance of Carnival. He didn't say, however, that, that Carnival has, is the most important area in the realm of creative industries. And he didn't say, however, that how much money is going out of this country through Carnival. Today, millions of our hard-earned dollars leaving this country and going to places like China, 
and New York, and as far as Japan, we importing feathers, we importing beads, we importing decorative materials. One of my students found that we, we importing nearly one million dollars in glue alone, glue alone. All this is money going out of the country. So while we're getting 400 million, we have to see how much is going out of the country. But what is the situation today with regards to our creative and cultural industries? First, there's a low level of cultural literacy among our people, our grads. We have lawyers, doctors, engineers, biologists who know very little of Trinidad and Tobago's history. We have, they, they come like bandits because the bandits don't know nothing about the country. Most of the people who are bandits because they don't, they don't, they, they are culturally illiterate. Uh, a teacher called me last week since Sparrow was sick and she asked me, uh, Dr. Liverpool, tell me something about Sparrow and I want to tell me class. I said, but you are a teacher? She said, well, I, I, I never studied Sparrow, you know, but tell me something about him now. Very, very low. So many of our students, our trained minds know little about marketing, about the business of music, of copyright, of Trinidad Tobago's history. We gave a scholarship last year to a, a guy from UTT. We gave, a, we gave him a scholarship and he landed in New York. And two weeks after he called me, Dr. Liverpool, they asked me to talk something on pan. You could tell me something about pan or where I could find it. A shame. <laughs> and we have, we have lecturers, not only at UDT, we have lecturers, not only at UDT, at UB all over the place. And when I invite them to Ram Leela, one lecturer asked me, what, what is that about? So what we have in the country is a lot of skewed people, you know, they're like this, they're leaning on one side. And today in, in our country, we spend millions of dollars annually on recording. We have been spending since 1914. What this country needs is a solid recording industry, a proper recording industry that will take care of our international standards. Too many of our artists are recording music under a house somewhere, etc. so we don't, make a, we don't make a dent on the international world. Another aspect of the situation today, and I'm glad the ACT man is here, is accreditation. Accreditation for our artists. And there's a major gap. This is a major gap that one can identify in the budget, especially with regards to creative industries. Blue Boy called me last year, just after he won. He called me and he says, Jockey, I'm going to Miami. I said, beautiful, Blue Boy. He said, but I get a big work, you know. I get a big work elsewhere. But they tell me um, I had to get a piece of paper. I say, a paper? He say, yes, a paper to say I'm an entertainer. You could give me something like that. Accreditation for artists. I am a member of a committee appointed by the, the Ministry of Multiculturalism to register artists. And every week we get people saying that, and they're claiming to be panists, song engineers, writers, poets, choreographers, music producers. Some say they are music arrangers, music composers. Unfortunately, they imagine themselves as such. They have no proof of what they claim to be. We get choreographers, and when, I, when we ask them, what have you choreographed? They say, well, we just take part in a play, you know? And we get music arrangers who can't read music. And they say they are, and they are musicologists. And we get all these things because they have not been properly accredited. Not their fault. What then is government's role? In my opinion, Government has given much to the arts, plenty money. But money for what sometimes? Money to produce shows, and that's fleeting. What is needed above all is funding for research. Research in the arts, research at postgraduate level especially. When I joined UTT, we had seven persons in the postgrad area doing research. Senator Ryan, Selvin Ryan, and all those guys. And today we have one. More money for, 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 for research. To me, today, we want to produce knowledgeable people in the arts, like Daga. You know, again, Mr. Moderator, uh, Daga was given a, an award. And I have to be answering questions. What did I give Daga an uh, award for? Who is he? Low levels. And if I tell them, I say, you don't know about Daga, and you went to secondary school? They say, yes. And we have people up in, in, up in the, in the postgrad pe people asking about who is Daga, because the, it, it, the, we need people, we need funding for research to produce more daggers in the, in, in the country. We need people to, to, to be trained in marketing. Government has to play a bigger role in the marketing via our international fairs, via our ambassadorial posts. 
You know, government's role is a major gap as the budget relates to creative industries is the need for us to concentrate on industries, especially industries relating to carnival. For example, shoemaking. We are, we are bringing in thousands of shoes for carnival. We are bringing in thousands of hats for carnival. We are bringing in thousands of costumes when we can be making them here. Sewing, for example. And therefore, we have to approach all these traditional arts and we have to concentrate on them because these, these, these crafts and arts are already with us. What then is UTT's role? UTT needs, and I'm saying this very slowly, to validate programs that when you leave secondary school, you can take part in films and dance and theater and chassa drumming and pan and calypso and music and guitar playing and instrumentals and parang and ramlila and chutney and all the traditional arts. It is the university who must lead and offer accreditation for our students, not Mary's school long in San Fernando. It is the university must, must do that. And not simply to get you BFA degrees and BA degrees, but to give you certificates as performers. This country needs people to get certificates in performances. I was doing some interviews last week with the Vice Provost, and we get so many people who want to, to do the Masters in Carnival Arts, but they don't have the necessary skills. Some of them could just beat a pan. So we need to harness all these people and give them certificates, but give them certificates in the performing arts along, let me say it very slowly, along with the academic. We have to balance that, that person. It is the university who must harness all the wasted resources we see annually in the Better Village program to train them, train them by combining the performance skills with the academic. And above all, the university must ensure that all our training reflects Trinidad and Tobago. I better say that again. All our training must reflect Trinidad and Tobago for branding. Training must be steeped in the Trinidad and Tobago ethic. So we must reflect Trinidad and Tobago in our training. For example, we must not only produce European fashions, don't want to hit the fashion people too hard, but we must produce fashions a la Trinidad. Fashions, we must produce Indian fashions and African fashions a la Trinidad and not just European fashions. You know, I went to Senegal once, and I was very posting, etc. and I put, on my, my, I put on my dashiki, and I landed in, in Senegal. And when I reached there in the airport, I saw everybody laughing at me and giving me cool your mouth. You know what's cool your mouth? You know what's cool your mouth? You see low levels of the uh, uh, thing again? Look, cool your mouth is when somebody do so. So they give me cool your mouth. Ask your mother and your father when you go about that and your grandfather. So I look back because they're laughing at me and I ask them, what is, what is the purpose of you doing me so? They say, are you a woman? I say, no, I'm a man. They say, well, men don't wear dashiki. Dashiki is for women. See that? I'm just showing you how you must be culturally literate. I too was culturally illiterate at the time. So if we produce a lawyer, and we produce lawyers who are, who are not culturally literate, we produce bandits. If we produce lawyers who don't know nothing but Indian people, they're going to rob Indian people. And if we produce architects who know nothing but African people, they're going to rob African people. So we, we at the university have to produce the all wrong people. All dancers, all pan men must get certificates that will lead them to diplomas and degrees. If a man can get a degree in Spanish, he could get one in TASA. And we have to start doing that at UGT. A person must be able to get a degree in tassa drumming and in chutney and in calypso. I am longing to see one of my young Calypsonians getting a degree in calypso. And we have to start that. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. So finally, the impact of the budget as it relates to the development of the creative industries will be seen when people are trained and developed fully. And speaking of Tobago, Trent Utility needs to offer all our students the same programs via video conferencing and technology. Let us all aim not just for skills. Let us not just aim for skills in the workplace, but let us, aim not, let us aim not aim only for jobs, but let us aim for the total human development if we have to get rid of crime, and if you want to produce well-rounded individuals. God bless you, and God bless you very much.